I'm Wayne, and I'm glad you could join me for another episode of My Christian Observations, reminding and encouraging you to be the light, helping myself and others to discuss the Bible and learn the truths of how to live our life in a way that God, well, that he just might approve of. I like to start off this podcast by reading Matthew 5, 14 through 16, just to remind everybody, as you go out there day to day, whether it's with your family, your co-workers, people you interact with, strangers on the street, remember to be the light. So today in the podcast, we're going to discuss another famous parable of Jesus. This one is called the Parable of the Talents. So for those of us that maybe haven't read the Parable of the Talents before, or perhaps you're just starting to read the Bible, the word talents in this, right, the Parable of the Talents, really refers to, if you could think of it as finances, or I look at it when in visually in my head as I read this parable, I think of bags or sacks of coins or money, silver or gold. But back at the time that this was written, they used to call them talents. So here we go. Again, this is found in Matthew chapter 25, and this is verses 14 through 30. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country, who calls his own servants and delivers his goods to them. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, each according to his own ability, and immediately he went on a journey. Then he who had received the five talents went and traded with them and made another five talents. And likewise, he who had received two gained two more also. But he who had received one went and dug in the ground and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. So he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You are faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. He also, who had received two talents, came and said, Lord, you delivered me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid, and I went and I hid your talent in the ground. Look, there, have what is yours. But his Lord answered and said to him, You wicked and lazy servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gathered where I have not scattered seed, so you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers. And at my coming, I would have received back my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to him who has ten talents. For to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will have abundance. But from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. And cast the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So what is the meaning of this parable? Well, this well-known teaching of Jesus carries several layers of meanings, and it's often been interpreted as a lesson about stewardship, faithfulness, and the kingdom of heaven. So I've got for you guys the four main themes of the parable, so let's break those down. The first theme of this parable is stewardship. This parable emphasizes the concept of stewardship, which means responsibility managing the resources and the gifts entrusted to us by God. And for you, those resources and responsibilities, those gifts that you have may be totally different than the ones that I have, but we're still to manage them all responsibly. Now, the master in the story represents God, and the talents symbolize the various gifts, abilities, and the resources we receive from him. The parable encourages us to be faithful stewards who use these blessings wisely for productive and beneficial purposes. The second theme of this parable is accountability. The parable underscores the idea that we'll all be held accountable for how we've used the gifts and the opportunities that have been given to us by God. The master's return and the subsequent settling of the accounts represents a day of judgment when we're all going to have to give an account for our actions and our choices. This accountability serves as a motivation for responsible and faithful stewardship. The third lesson this parable teaches us is about rewards and consequences. 
The parable teaches us about the rewards for faithfulness and the consequences of being neglectful or inaction. The servants who multiplied their talents were rewarded with greater responsibility and a share in the master's joy. In contrast, the unprofitable servant faced severe consequences, losing even what little he had. Now, this illustrates the principle that God rewards those who use their gifts wisely and productively, while neglecting one's responsibilities leads to negative outcomes. And the fourth main theme of this parable is about the kingdom of heaven. The parable begins with the statement, For the kingdom of heaven is like. This indicates that the parable is intended to convey a deeper spiritual truth about the nature of God's kingdom. It teaches that the principles of stewardship, accountability, and consequences apply to our relationship with God and our participation in His kingdom. The parable serves as a metaphor for understanding how we should live our lives as citizens of God's kingdom right here on the earth today, faithfully using the talents and the resources that He's given us for His purposes. And overall, the parable teaches us to be faithful, responsible, and productive stewards of the gifts and the opportunities that we receive from God, with the promise of reward for our faithfulness and the warning of consequences if we neglect. It teaches that our actions and our choices matter both in this life and in our eternal destiny. So every podcast for a few minutes, I like to sit down with you guys and explain how we can apply the teachings to your life today, how we can incorporate the principles and the lessons into our actions and our mindset on a daily basis. And honestly, as with most teachings of Jesus, even if they seem like they're short, we could talk for hours about the implications and the meanings behind them, but we're going to briefly go over about nine different points. Maybe you can grab a pen and a paper and start by identifying your own talents, abilities, and resources. You can reflect on what you've been given, whether it's skills or time, or perhaps with you, it's money or finances or any other kind of assets, and recognize that those blessings have been entrusted to you by God himself. Our next point is on responsibility and stewardship. You've got to remember that you're a steward of the gifts and the resources that you possess. Just as the servants in the parable were entrusted with talents or financial gain or money, bags of silver, however you picture it in your head when you hear this, remember you're entrusted with various assets of your own. Again, it may not be finances or money. It could be some other type of gift. But you're responsible to embrace the responsibility to use them wisely and productively. Now, the third piece we're going to touch on is investment and multiply. The parable encourages us to invest and multiply what we've been given. Apply this by actively seeking opportunities to grow and develop your skills, resources, and opportunities. Look for ways to use your talents to benefit others and yourself. On risk-taking and diligence. The servants who multiplied the talents in this parable took risks and they were diligent in their efforts. So don't be afraid to step out of your comfort zone, take some calculated risks, and work hard to achieve your goals and make the most of your resources. Now remember the servant who received the one talent. This next piece touches on his behavior. Avoid fear and inaction. The servant who buried his talents did so out of fear and inaction. It's so important to not let fear hold you back from pursuing your dreams and using your gifts. It's our job to be proactive and to avoid the temptation to simply maintain the status quo. It's so easy to get caught up in day-to-day life and not step out and to not do the right things and just to play it safe. On accountability and evaluation. Periodically, assess your progress on how you're using your talents and your resources. Are you making the most of them, or are there areas in your life that you can improve on? Being accountable to yourself, and if applicable, seeking guidance from other mentors or people that you really trust can help you stay on track. One of the things that I pray about all the time is for God to put you know, godly men, friends in my life who are just always one step ahead of me. They're smarter than me. They're richer than me. They've done everything better than me to help me to be able to stay on track. The parable also taught about generosity and sharing. The parable suggests that those who use their talents wisely are going to be entrusted with more. In your life, consider sharing your blessings with others through acts of kindness and charity and generosity. Sharing can lead to even greater abundance and fulfillment in your life. Remember to be mindful of your motives. 
Examine your motives behind the actions that you do on a day-to-day basis. Are you using your talents and your resources for self-gain or for the greater good? Strive to cultivate a sense of purpose and to desire and make positive impact in the world. One of the most important things that God reminded me when he kind of woke me up, you know, and I'll share my testimony on another podcast. But for me, my life changed when God made me realize that the world wasn't all about me, me, me. Up until that point, I had been trying to get jobs to make myself more money, to get a nicer house, to take care of just myself and the members in my immediate family, my wife and my kids. And it was all about me. Every year it was looking to just improve all those things that the three of us had. And if you were close enough to me, maybe some of my really good friends or other immediate family, maybe you'd reap the benefits of it where I might invite you over for a barbecue or something so you can see how good I'm doing. But my life was all about me. And when God woke me up and I realized that this life and the amount of time that we have here is not all about me, that it's supposed to be about everybody else, my life totally changed. And when that happens for you, you'll never be able to go back to the old way of living. Now, the final piece that the parable touches on that we're going to talk about anyway today is to prepare for the accountability. Remember that one day you may be called to account for how you've used those talents and the resources that God's given you. As a matter of fact, I'm going to rephrase that and say you will be in front of Jesus one day and you're going to have to account for what you've done with what he's given you here on earth. So live in the awareness that your actions are going to have consequences, both in this life and potentially in a spiritual or moral sense. Now, I strongly believe, actually, I really know that if you apply these principles of this parable, right, the parable of the talents, you can become a more responsible, purpose-driven, and productive individual that's going to make the most of the gifts that God's given you, those gifts, those resources, that time. And this is going to lead you to personal growth and positive contributions to society, to friends, just to the world in general. So now let's take a few more minutes to just reflect on four questions and ponder a minute about what we've been talking about. The first reflective question. And again, if you've got a pad and paper, write this down. Spend a little time thinking about it. Maybe just not in the few minutes of this podcast, but maybe throughout the day or throughout the weekend or throughout the week. Reflective question number one, my friends, what are my talents and resources? Take a little bit of time to identify and list your own talents, skills, and resources. What has God entrusted you with? Now, this could include your abilities, your education, your finances. Maybe you're retired, so maybe right now you have a lot of time on your hands or any other number of assets you currently have. Reflect on what you have and how you could use those gifts more effectively day to day. Reflective question number two, am I fearful of taking risks and stepping out of my comfort zone? So again, take a few minutes to consider whether fear has ever held you back from pursuing opportunities or taking risks that are going to help you grow and develop. Reflect on a few missed opportunities and how you can overcome that fear in the future to make the most of your talents and your resources. Reflective question number three, how am I multiplying my talents and resources today? Evaluate your actions and your efforts in terms of multiplying those talents and resources. Are you actively seeking opportunities to grow, to invest, to make a positive impact? Take the time to reflect on areas in your life where you could stand to improve. And today, our last reflective question is going to be, what is the greater purpose behind my actions? We're talking motives, people. So examine the motives and the purpose behind how you use your talents and your resources. Remember a few minutes ago, I talked about, am I using them all for me? Or have I gotten to a point where God's really made me understand that it's supposed to be about helping others? So are you primarily focused on self-gain or do you have a broader vision for making a positive contribution to the community or the world around you? Reflect on how aligning your actions with a greater purpose can bring more meaning to your life. 
So these four reflective questions can help you to deepen your understanding of the parable of the talents and its relevance in your own life. Take the time for self-examination and thoughtful consideration on how you can be more responsible and a productive steward of God's given gifts and resources in your life. And as I like to say, remember that one day each of us is going to be present before the Lord waiting to hear one of two things. Well done, good and faithful servant, or depart from me, I never knew you.